Welcome to another episode of Dude's Debate. So this one is gonna be a little different. I mean, it's kind of got a little bit of the same premise. One person cynical, one person more, more optimistic about it, and one person that uh, kind of is more of a neutral stance. I don't think you know who that is. Guess who's neutral? Obviously, Mike. Anyway, no, <laughs> obviously. But so this time we're on this ep on our debate, we're actually gonna be talking about um, Legends of Zelda Majora's Mask because I just learned that it turns out that this is one of the games where it's actually flipped when I'm the optimistic one and Mike's actually the one that's skeptical <laughs> of it. But Travis still has a neutral position. I'm not skeptical. I, well, uh, or he did not like over it. I am <laughs> on, I'm on the opinion of I hate the game just because I played it as a stupid ass child. <laughs> and I will say stupid ass because like Ocarina of Time made no sense to me. And that's, <laughs> I just played it again this summer, like half of it, and then it got deleted. So I didn't, still haven't beaten it because it's so left. <laughs> whatever. But, um, I just like, I beat the Deco Tree as a child, and then like, I even struggled with just the stupid freaking whatever the fat things that. I don't know. <laughs> the stupid fat things. They, they eat rocks. The Dudongos? Go Goron, yes. Yes. That, that part confused me as a child. That's not even hard. <laughs> that's it's not hard at all. That's dungeon, and this is a child dungeon, too. Wait, that's what I mean. I was a practically. I don't even want to talk about Majora's Mask, but so you went into this place with <laughs> yeah, fat dudes like, that yeah, eat yeah, rocks. <laughs> And like, so what? 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 You know, what did you think just... as a kid? Like, well, no, like, I, no, it was just <laughs> these weird fat people are just eating all these rocks. Well, first of all, scare I you was, and you're like, I can't. No, do this no, anymore. it didn't scare me. It's I was too stupid to find that stupid bomb plant to throw it at the cave to begin <laughs> no, with, so the, I the couldn't even find the dungeon. And then when I finally found the dungeon after probably an hour of playing, the dungeon was hiding. I will the emphasize, rock. I was a, I will emphasize, I was a dumb ass child. <laughs> <clears throat> to be oh fair, anyway, that took me a while when I was a kid, too. Thank you. That did take me right, it's just, I did not have patience. So if when I didn't find it, I gave up and then played my only other game I had, uh, Super Mario 64. That made much more sense. You jump into painting and you know exactly where the star is going to be. That's a game for dumb people because that game makes no sense anyway. <laughs> it's just a nonsensical world. <laughs> that's why I loved it as a child. Like, I hate right. it here. Majora's Mask, what'd you hate about it, Mike? Okay, <laughs> well, I'm just going to throw something at you and then I want to hear you defend it. Because okay. here's the thing, No, right? seriously, no. Please, please let me know. Because I well, love see, Majora's okay, Mask. Okay, well first, before I say anything, what's your opinion on the boss battles in that game? The boss battles? Half of them I loved, half of them were fucking stupid. Okay, because like when I look at that game, I look at all the Zelda games, right? I think that game had the worst bosses of any Zelda game. I think the final boss, I don't know if it's a 20 year old game, that's but like, I might have to agree with you on that because there's stupid, well, it's, it's a little bit of a spoiler, like, go ahead, finish, but yeah, yeah I might okay. have to agree with you a little bit on Well, because the final boss was way too easy, first of all, and it was Especially way too the short. Especially the mask. Yeah, and it was <laughs> way so too easy. short. Like, I look at Twilight Princess, and Twilight Princess, I'm not thinking real hard, so it might not be. Yeah. I'm gonna say it was my favorite final boss fight, because it had so many different phases of Ganondorf, and they were, Pretty hard, some of them. Some of them weren't too bad, but some of them were pretty hard. Majora's Mask was, like, so easy to beat, and so that kind of bothered me. The thing that I... Okay. I will have to agree with you that it, did, it was on the side of, like, the worst boss, ba boss fights. Because, I mean, okay, I know you love Link to the Past, but in my mind, I don't... Well, I kind of, I kind of think that boss fights, boss fights should be challenging too. Some of the boss fights there, I think, will feel like a little bit too easy. I'm not saying they have bad boss fights. I think some of them, though, in there, I just did not like. Like the one where you're saving a person from the thieves place and like they turn into like a freaking butterfly. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> it's like hey, butterflies are very scary. <laughs> they can be vicious. vicious. They can be vicious. It's like, it's like some of those fights like that. I'm thinking, like, I'm not gonna lie. Link to the Past was a hard game. Mm -hmm. I, I had a hard time, be like, like not hard time playing it, but like hard time beating some of the bosses. Right. But. With Majora's Mask, I do admit, yeah, the boss fights were easy. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot easier than the other ones. But I'd have to argue, I think Wind Waker, I think Wind Waker's an easier game overall. Yeah, I think those it is boss easier, fights, for sure. I think those boss fights were also very easy. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to say it's kind of a tie between Wind Waker and Majora's Mask for, like, easiest boss fights. Yeah. That's just my opinion, though. But go on with your uh, what you didn't like about Majora's Mask. Okay, I think the other thing I didn't like about it was, <laughs> in RPGs, I like open world type games. And I know okay. Zelda is an N64 game, so it's not going to be expansive, right? Yeah. But... I, the whole thing is in Clock Tower, and Terminate Field is not big. It's yeah. a very small area with like four little branches, and even those other areas are very small, mm -hmm. right? I don't remember the names of any of them, but like when you look at the beach place, I don't know if you know what they're called and want to tell me, but I can't remember. Off the top Maybe of that's my head. where the fat dudes who ate rocks are. Maybe no. they're on the beach now. <laughs> they ate all the rocks. They, they became the Zoras. Maybe that's po what it was. Pokemon Sun and Moon. Right, there we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. A different Goron <laughs> form. <laughs> no, sorry. That's awesome. No, but like it just. There, it just felt like, with the clock mechanic and rewinding, it felt like the, you stayed in one area most of the time. 
and then you would kind of deviate to another area and then come back to Clock Town. And I didn't like how it was all in that same one area. Okay. Like in Ocarina of Time, like if I, like in Ocarina of Time, where's the base area, would you say? I'd have to say either, obviously, obviously the Kokiri, no, the forest, the Kokiri forest, like the right. Great Taku Tree area. Yeah. And probably the Castle Town. Exactly. And that, that's my point, right? And you could even argue like maybe like Takariko Village could be, right? So Takariko yeah. Village, So yes. you kind of said four areas. So my point is like, there's a lot of different areas that you like, you know, main your time in. Yeah. Whereas like this one, it feels like the whole game takes place in Clock Town. You know? Yeah, it kind of like, kind of, it's kind of like smaller. Yeah. And I didn't like that. It felt very like, contain it didn't feel like a full game to me. Okay, you know? I could see that. I so. Could. Is that like one of the biggest things though? Because before, before I respond. I have one other big thing, but I'll okay. let you respond to that. We'll save the big thing for last. Okay, the thing that I liked about that, we'll also let Travis respond, obviously. Yeah, of course. <laughs> if you yes. have an input, of course. Yes, it was way too easy. And that's why, <laughs> that is why I never beat it or Dude, even you beat were, a level if, of it. If, if you were longer at time as a kid, you would have, like, Majora's Mask would have blown your mind. Well, I know. I played it once at <laughs> some friend's house. I'm just like, this makes no fucking sense. <laughs> okay, that's okay. One of the things that I like about it is, like, maybe even you can say about Twilight Princess was a little bit like this. It did have, like, a little bit different of a feel to it, which is yeah. one of the things that I really liked about it. It had a more of a darker tone. It wasn't the cheerful Zelda, we're going to go save the princess. It was more like, this is this is a this is like a parallel thing like and honestly no offense Navi was a piece of shit Tattle's pretty cool the, was the, the fairy was kind of nice there's like a couple of the little little things that I liked about the game but in response to like the openness of the world one thing that I do like about that though I I'd agree it shouldn't have been like one way is this way one way is like like it's separated by which place you could go one thing that I liked about the world though is <clears throat> it feels like yes you're saying that like, you're only in Clock Town. But I feel like it gives more of a focus on like the time, because like the time is a huge mechanic in the game. Yeah. The time is like you like you have a chance to slow down time. You can skip forward like half like a half of a day and everything. Way over. You my can head. play one of the, yeah. <laughs> one of the biggest things that I liked about Majora's Mask is once you learn about like who's like in which place and like what events take place on which day, and you can like plan out like what events that you can do, what side quests that you can do at the time, what masks that you can go seek out, like at a, at a time that you have time to just fill in. I thought that was the most fun. It had mm -hmm. so much freedom, and it's like maybe 45% main game, 55% side quest. And for somebody yeah. like me, especially that gets distracted in an, in an RPG, I think that's awesome. I think yeah. that's all those all those extra things that you can do really like engage me. Really, really, I like that. Mm -hmm. I do agree that the world was wasn't like didn't feel as a as an RPG should feel, but in the same way, I actually would argue I liked the fact that it was focused around like Clock Town because it kept the focus on that's where you're supposed to be. Yeah. That's where the moon's gonna hit. That again, way over Travis's head. Oh uh, no, I definitely That's understand where... moon hitting. Okay, I saw that plenty of times. Moon go boom. <laughs> moon go boom. Very scary. Ooh. And that's like it's that's also like in Smash Bros. Melee. Like, you know. The, oh yeah. Comes yeah, yeah. And, uh, Cody always called them the watermelons. Pushed them back because the giants to <laughs> him were like watermelons. Oh yeah, perfect programming right there. But yeah, it was. <laughs> but that's what I liked about it. Like, like that main focus about it's about time. It's about the festival. There's so many people arguing whether it should be canceled and everything. That's what I. That's what I liked about it. That's one of the things that made it different. It had more of a darker, overarching story, mm -hmm. and it made me give me. A, it gave me a sense of urgency and non-urgency, which is crazy because it's two completely different things. It yeah. was urgent and non-urgent at the exact same time. And that's why I kind of fell in love with Majora's Mask. It's not my favorite Zelda game, but it's one of my favorites. Yeah. I love you. I disagree with everything you said, <laughs> except for one thing. Okay. I loved the creepiness, and I loved the darkness. Yeah. And that's why I love Twilight Princess. Yeah. Because I thought the environment in it was so cool. Yeah. And I like the fact that it didn't feel like a childish, stupid, let's go save the that's princess. That's what I'm saying. Like, that was an Octopus Princess. It's shit's going to go down. But look, we can, we can go Yeah, like it was evil school kid with this crazy mask with the moon crashing. Like, that's intense. Yeah. That's awesome. I did also enjoy that as a kid. I just didn't know how to make scary ass <laughs> yeah. mood not hit. I just didn't know how to stop the problem. You know, I ruined the party. <laughs> so uh, basically to answer what you said, should yeah. we or should we not cancel the festival? If Travis is playing, hell no, <laughs> Bort. If Nick is playing, it should be fine. <laughs> right, that's pretty much how it works. Or Mike, or Mike. Or maybe uh, Mike, I don't know how. I don't know about his Majora's Mask. He okay. might just like watching it crash just for fun. <laughs> no, you sicko. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, what's your other criticism on that? So, I, I absolutely yeah. hated the time thing. You hated I the time thing? could not stand it. I didn't like it in the beginning either, but sorry. Well, because like you talked about the urgency thing and the side quests. I like side quests, but I like doing it on my time. I don't like doing it on the game's time. Right? And it sucks because like you do something in the game and you reverse time and it like kind of undoes what you did. And it, it yeah. almost to me made me feel like I was wasting my time. 
And oh, it also okay. like I, I can see. A lot of the quests are very time specific, right? Oh, like yeah. the Anya thing, right? Everything is is it Anya? I don't remember Cafe. the names. Yeah. Cafe. Yeah. Cafe. Yeah. Oh, trust me, I know. I did that I quest say, so many times. I say shit and then look at you so you can correct me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like the super long side quest that is so time specific. Yeah. And it, it's very confusing. Well, right? that's one of the things that I kind of liked about it. Sorry to interrupt there. But I kind of like the fact that you could kind of like do it for a little bit and then go back if you know like what's going to happen at what time. I started like right. being able to route it a little bit. Not like speed running, but I mean like kind of planning out like the next day. That's actually one of the things, even though I hated it at the beginning, I ended up actually liking it at the end. Right. Sorry. But that's the thing, like, is then you have to go back and then kind of repeat what you did, you know? Yeah. It's like, it'd be cool, like, if, okay, I did the first part of the quest, and then I reverse time, and, like, I could pick up from where I left off, but you can't, you have to redo it. So it just gets repetitive, you yeah. know? And it, it feels kind of tedious to me after a while. Okay. You know? Okay. I, okay, so the thing, the thing about that, though... I mean, yeah, I mean, I explained my thoughts on it. I actually ended up liking that part in the end, but no, I agree. Like, when I first do it, started doing it, and, like, I had to recollect arrows. I had to recollect yeah. magic, or not, like, recollect magic. I had to, like, re-go over parts because I messed up something in the cafe quest, which I did a lot. Yeah. Because I was a kid when I was playing it. Mm -hmm. But even with all that, first of all, the obvious one, being a Goron and a Zora, fucking badass as hell. Deku, I could go with the that. The masks in that game were rocks. phenomenal. I loved yeah. the masks in that game. The masks were amazing. Were I made so all awesome. different power-ups. But the main thing, like, this is, like, well, the biggest thing that I liked about Majora's Mask, about, like, the whole thing, which is kind of, like, kind of weird to think about, is there are so many different things. There wasn't, like, a central... One thing that's been specific about Zelda games, you have this one powerful sword. You have the Master Sword, you have the Skyward Sword, where the Skyward Sword becomes this Master Sword. Yeah. Or you have, like, the Four Sword. Mm -hmm. You have one weapon, and you have, like, one way to do it. In Majora's Mask, that's not what happens. You can't even go without a sword for a while. You can have your sword being forged into a different sword, the Great Sword. Then you have like a Gilded Sword. You can have the Great Fairy Sword. You can even have a sword on like the, uh, what is it, on the uh, Fierce fierce Deity. And honestly, in the final boss, you don't even need a sword to beat him. No. You don't even need to actually use this item at all to do it. Yeah. And that kind of freedom and that kind of originality in, like, in a Zelda game, that's one of the things that I loved about it. The fact yeah. that, we'll take for example the Water Temple boss, which by the way, that fucking Water Temple is stupid as hell. If you want to say that you hate that Water Temple, I... I hated the water. That water temple's worse than Ocarina of Time. I don't care. Yeah, water temples is just always awful. Yeah, it's true. But no, like, that was one of the things I liked about it. Because you could kill him, you could shoot arrows at him, yeah. or you could be like a Zora to do it. That kind of, that, I mean, didn't happen for every boss, but having, like, no one way to beat a boss, which is something that usually happens in Zelda games, you get a dungeon item, you use that to beat the boss. Right. Yeah. That's what I like about it. And that's not really seen as much. But, like, I mean, you see it in, like, Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, or whatever. You get a hook shot, you have to beat Mulgara. You get you get the bow and arrow, you have to beat Phantom Ganon. It's, or I guess in, what is it, the uh, the guy with two hands and uh, basically, like... Bongo Bongo. Well, the guy that's a rip off of Bongo Bongo, like, I remember when... No, I remember from the Tower of the Gods you talking yeah, about? Yeah, the Tower of the Gods. I don't remember his you, name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not, like, a very specific thing, like, you have to do this to win. Like, right. when you face Goat in the Second Temple... You don't even use the fire arrows. You can you can beat them with arrows. You don't even have to use the astral mask itself. Yeah. You can beat them. I like that kind of originality. I like the fact that hey, if you don't want to do it this way, you don't have to do it that way. You can experiment in a different way. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the biggest things. Like, okay, this is why I like Majora's Mask right. more than some of the other Zelda's. Yeah. No. And for sure. that's my fi my final thought on that, which is why I like Majora's Mask more than a couple of Zelda's. I don't want to. Specifically say those in case we do it. But it's pretty good. Yeah, it's not the yeah. best, but I think it's up there in my, my top three. Well, and I would say it's not the worst Zelda. I mean, I think it's a fun Zelda. Yeah. I just feel like, because I totally agree, and it does feel like you have so much freedom in is that sense, right? So much side quest. And so much, and I love side questing games. I think the side quests in that game are awesome. Yeah, Mike is a 100% freak in yeah. every yeah. game he plays, and especially if you get achievements fun. for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Well, because it's fun, and it's fun <laughs> to do that extra stuff. Yeah. But, like, the way the clock ruins it for me. Okay. Because it makes it so time constrained, and it makes it so much less fun when you have to, like, if I don't finish by the end of the day, or by the end of the three days, you yeah. have to go all the way back and redo everything. I just love how the fact that, like, one of the things that I love about it is the exact same thing that you hate about it. Yeah. <laughs> I just See, isn't that weird? <laughs> like, we agree on everything, but you think the clock makes it better, not even <laughs> it works. It's very interesting. All right, Travis. Your five-year-old self okay. going into it. Well, um... <clears throat> master analysis. My master analysis is I really hope... Pokemon, uh, Sun and Moon. The <laughs> Moon Legendary is the scary moon from uh, Majora's Mask, and I really hope the Sun Legendary is the scary sun in uh, Super Mario. 
Dude, which That'd is scarier. Sweet. That would be amazing. <laughs> Actually, and then I would buy both versions. I would too. Just to get both of them. <laughs> That'd be sick. Uh, and uh, with that said, Majora's Mask, I feel like I would enjoy if I tried playing it again. Because <laughs> I'm not as stupid. Minus, <laughs> minus like me it. saying, you know, the fat people who eat rocks. You know, that that doesn't count as me sounding stupid. <laughs> he's about as smart as like an eight-year-old now. So. Yeah. I, like, I, like how wasn't, up there. I like how it wasn't me being corrected <laughs> on being stupid. He's like, I'm correcting myself on <laughs> saying I'm not that yeah, stupid. I, I know oh I, I've tried to say things and then I'm like, I completely forgot what freaking Goron's name was. So yeah. I just tried to identify it with the fat people who eat the rocks. Darunia is the sage of the fire temple. Is he a fat person, too? <laughs> He's a fat person that you are. He's also a fatty. <laughs> but yeah, okay, let us know what you think in the comment section below. This was fun.